take a look at this ender right here. That right there is a Silver War nickel. These were made from 1942 up through 1945. There's definitely a big difference in the color. Now for the flip, guys. Three, two, one. Hello everybody and welcome back to Coin Quest. In case you're unaware, Coin Quest is a series where I go through $100 boxes of nickels like this one right here, go through the rolls in the boxes and look for interesting and valuable coins that I can use to fill in my collection books. Now guys, as you can see, I already have a ton of nickel rolls laid out on the table here. The reason for that is because every single one of these rolls, nine rolls in total, have enders on them. So what are these nine enders that I have laid out here on the table for you? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm gonna do this a little weird. I'm gonna start with the best one first. Let's take a look at this ender right here. Oh my gosh, guys, that right there is a Silver War nickel. These were made from 1942 up through 1945, and the way that you can tell that you have a Silver War nickel is you have a mint mark up there on the top of the Monticello rather than being on the right-hand side of it. You can also tell just by that darker tone that we do have a Silver War nickel right here. These have been extremely difficult for me to find, and I still need a ton of them in the collection, so I'm super excited to get this one. Up next, we have two guaranteed older coins right here. I keep everything before 19. 1960s, so both of these are automatically keepers just based on their dates. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. You can see right here, this one is a 1958. And depending on what we have on the reverse of that coin, we could actually have a low mintage coin right there as well. And then this one right here is actually very similar. Uh, no chance for a low mintage coin, but it is a 1957. It's a little bit hard to see the date though. Up next, we have two extremely worn down reverses. And as you can see here, we don't have mint marks on either one of those coins, but they look extremely old. I'm thinking one of these could be a 1938, which is the very first year that the Jefferson Nichols were minted. Then right here, we have three more old looking reverses. These ones all have a Denver mint mark on them, which dates them at least as old as 1964. I'm hoping that they're older than that though. We definitely have a good shot on these ones. Then the last sender here may be interesting, maybe not. I thought it was just kind of cool though. It looks like somebody found this metal detecting and threw it back into circulation. So there you have it guys, an unbelievable record setting nine enders on the box. If those are on the ends of the rolls, imagine what's on the inside. Now, as you can see, this war nickel right here happens to be a Philadelphia mint mark you can see that up on the top of the Monticello and if we take a look at our book here where we're missing a whole bunch of these war nickels the one Philadelphia that we need is 1945 so I'm hoping for a 1945 Philadelphia but just having a silver war nickel is great on its own let's see if we can get that 45 though and now for the moment of truth let's go ahead and open up this roll and see if we get it guys I'm hoping for a 1945 let's go ahead and open it this way let's see if we can get it to come out uh, without disturbing any of the other coins, I'll just kind of spin it around here a little bit and we will just pull it right off of the top there. Man, that is so cool to see. You can see there's definitely a big difference in the color uh, on that one versus all of the other coins in the roll. So let's go ahead and pull it off here and set the rest of the roll down. I'm guessing that there's probably gonna be more keepers in there but uh, we'll put it down for now. Now you can see it much better, that Philadelphia on the top of the Monticello there. Now for the flip, guys. Hoping for the 1945. Let's get it here. Three two, one. Oh, no way. Did I just drop it? Oh my gosh, guys, 1945, there it is. This never works for me. And I was really thinking it was probably gonna be a 43 uh, because that's typically the one that you find that's the most common of the war nickels, but we actually just got it, 1945 Philadelphia, and that is going into the collection. Unfortunately, I can't do a retake because that was a live opening. I can't believe I just dropped that, uh, but still, guys, that is so, so cool to see. Very, very nice. I really hope that we can get some more in this box as well. That's really a good sign uh, that there may be some more in there. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the collection up here and see where that is going to be going in. As we saw earlier, 1945 Philadelphia, it breaks up all this white space right here, which has been there for so long in this series. It's going to be going right there. So cool, guys. Silver war nickel right off the bat. Let's go ahead and look through the rest of these rolls and see what else there is inside. And uh, I'm already seeing something that looks kind of older right there. Let's pull that one out real quick and take a look. Okay, that's just gonna be a 1969S, but it also did have that darker look to it, so I thought we might have had something there. But anyways, guys, uh, without any further ado, let's just push the rest of these rolls, uh, rest of these coins out and see if we're gonna get anything else in this roll. This was the Silver War Nickel Ender roll, and uh, I'm sure that there's gonna be something else in here for us to find. Like I said in the beginning, guys, just looking at what's on the end of this box, imagine what is gonna be on the inside of it. All right, so going through these just real briefly, scanning for anything that looks super old. I'm actually not seeing anything right now, so I don't think that uh, this, uh, this roll actually has anything else for us. 
So I guess with that, let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which I think is right. No, we're going to do the 58 uh, rather than the 57. I think that the 58 actually has a chance to be a low mintage coin. So let's go ahead and pull that one out and uh, I'll try to stay in focus here. And we'll just get that one out of the roll, just like we did with the uh, war nickel earlier. So there it is. I think we're going to be able to see it a little better now. Yep, just pull that back. That is the 1958 right there, as you can see. All right, let's uh, roll this back here and just snag that one right off the top, as you can see. So we're actually looking for no mint mark when we flip this one over. If we can get a 1958 Philadelphia, that is going to be a low mintage coin. And this one is actually in really good shape, guys. Take a look at that. Very, very nice for its age. Let's go ahead and flip this over and see if we can get that Philadelphia mint mark and get a low mintage coin in three, two, and one. Unfortunately, it looks like we do have a small Denver mark to the right of the uh, Monticello there. You can see that tiny little uh, D for Denver. So uh, we'll be putting that one to the side. Not gonna be low mintage, but still pretty cool to find. Let's see if there's anything else in this roll. Maybe we'll have a little bit better luck uh, since we didn't get as good of a coin off of the ender there. All right, let's go ahead and look through this. I'm seeing some 60s coins, nothing really popping out at me yet though but would love to get a buffalo uh, out of one of these rolls this one's looking a little bit older i think we might have something here let's just flip that one live nope 79 man i don't think i've ever been more off uh from a, an old coin than a 1979 but i guess there's a first for everything all right so honestly these uh the middle of these rolls haven't really been too exciting so far but the enders are definitely telling a different story than uh, what we're seeing in the middle of the rolls. Uh, but that's all right, that's just two rolls. We're only two rolls into the box and we have, I think, seven more enders to go. Let's go ahead and open one more live and then uh, I'll get into some of these lesser enders off camera and we'll see if we can get anything uh, out of them. So this one is the 1957 right here. I'm just gonna spin this one around just like I did the last two and uh, we'll see if we're gonna get anything off of this roll. Now the 57, the thing about the 57 is uh, they only made them in Philadelphia and Denver. There's nothing too interesting about either one of those as far as I know. Um, I'm not a huge air coin guy though, so there might be something that I'm not aware of. But we'll just pull that one off the top right there. Let's take a look at that 1957 right there. Pretty nice looking coin, a little bit more beat up than that 58. It also has some scratches down there below uh, the chin. Uh, this one's probably not worth a countdown, so we'll just flip this one over and see what we got for a mint mark. All right, so you can see once again a Denver mint mark right there. Uh, so this that's going to make this a 1957 Denver. We'll just put that one aside and keep on hunting. And uh, let's see if we can get anything out of this third roll. Would be nice to get something out of the middle of these rolls. Especially if it was like a buffalo or something. I haven't, I don't think I've, I'm not sure if I've ever caught a buffalo live on camera. Uh, so hopefully we can do that today because we have quite a bit of promise coming out of uh, this particular box. So let's go ahead and get through the rest of these. Also keeping an eye out for the 2009 coins. Those are uh, low mintage. So uh, I will be keeping an eye out for those as well. That's why I'm flipping every coin, even the newer looking ones. Those are going to be the 2009s. But I guess that's it for the third roll. We really struck out with the middle of these rolls. So I'm gonna get into some of these other enders. I'll let you guys know what I'm finding along the way, especially if one of the coins comes out and looks really good. With that being said, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get on to the next roll. So guys, looking at these enders, I realized it would be kind of foolish not to reveal these all on camera, just in case there is something good in there. So I'm actually gonna start uh, with these three uh, reverse Denver enders. And I'm just gonna kind of take a look at them. We'll look at the coins on the inside a little bit later and I'll let you know if I find anything. But let's just look at these enders uh, first off. So you can see there's the Denver mint mark right there. That one below, it looks a little bit older as well. But uh, let's see if we're gonna get anything on this one. It does kind of look older, but uh, not too promising. Let's go ahead and flip it over and see what we get. Of course, it's going to be a 1964. This is the enemy of every single uh, nickel coin roll hunter. And uh, I do see something right here though that looks kind of interesting. I'm gonna pull this one out by its edge just in case. Man, it would be really nice to see something cool come out here like a buffalo or something, but it looks like that's just gonna be newer and kind of beat up. So we'll pull this roll to the side. Let's take a look at that next ender. Let's see, here it is on this side. So the first one was, was a bust. It was a 1964. Let's see if we're gonna get one uh, on number two. And uh, these reverse Denver enders are tricky sometimes because you always wanna open them uh, but you never know. It's probably almost always going to be a 1960s coin. This one's actually in really good shape, so I'm hoping we get something on this one, guys. Let's flip it over and see what we get. 
1962. Once again, it's not a 64, so it's not as bad as, as that, but uh, 62 is not a whole lot better. Anyway, though, I do see a couple of um, some colorful coins here, a little bit darker tone to them. This one I think could possibly be a war nickel. It would be really nice to uh, see one come out here. So let's see what we get. Ah, 1988. That's not going to cut it. What about this one over here? This one also looks like it might have the possibility. Okay, a little bit darker toning there. Let's see what we have. Nope, 1970s coin. So that one is a bust as well. We have a 62 and a 64 out of those enders. So we are 0 for, oh, 0 for 2 so far. Let's see if we can go uh, 1 for 3 on this final one right here. I think it's going to be that ender right there. Let's see if we have any more color in the roll. I don't see any. So let's just pull that ender out and uh, see what we're going to get for this one. I'll look through the rest of those coins a little bit later. There is the Denver ender right there, and we'll flip it over to see what we got. And it's another 1964, so I guess we're 0 for 3 on those guys. I'm going to look through the rest of these, let you know if we get anything good, and then we're going to get into those other enders, which look a little bit more promising. So guys, unbelievably, in all three of those rolls, we also struck out in the middle, and there was nothing in those coins. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump these in the box now. And we will get onto our last three rolls. Like I said, these do look a lot more promising. I don't know about this metal detecting find. I'm, I'm interested just to see what the year on it is. But these two right here, which actually don't have uh, reverse mint marks, they look a lot older. You can see right there the age on those. I would be really, really surprised if either one of these uh, was minted after 1960. So let's start with this one right here. I'm really hoping for a 1938. I do have to say I don't actually need any more Philadelphia minted coins. That 45 Philadelphia is actually the last Philadelphia minted coin uh, that I needed in the collection. So uh, I won't need this in the collection per se, but uh, if this is a 38 or something, or a 55 even, I didn't even think about that, uh, definitely wouldn't be a bad addition to the collection as an extra. So let's take a look at this one, guys. Man, that looks old. Okay, let's flip it over here in three, two, one. Ooh, guys, almost made it as a 38. That is a 1939 right there, second year Jefferson nickel. These are fairly common, the 39 Philadelphias, but still really, really cool anytime you see that, not, that three on uh, the Jefferson nickel right there. So uh, let's just check the rest of this roll real quick to see if we have any color in it, uh, like we did on the other rolls. So uh, do you guys see anything uh, out of the ordinary? I'm thinking maybe well, we might have one right here that's a little bit darker. No, that's not going to be anything. What about this one over here? This one's kind of weird looking as well. But yeah, I was going to say probably not a war nickel, just kind of an uh, interesting tone. Got a 62 out of it anyway, but that is awesome guys in 1939 as an ender really doesn't get a whole lot better than that um, Except maybe this one right here Let's see if we can get the exact same thing or if we can get one year older. I would be super excited about that uh, Like I said this one also is really looking similar to that last one that we looked at So uh, I'm thinking that we might have a similar coin here All right, let's pull that ender off. You can see it right there Kind of showing itself, like I said, also looking very old. And what do you guys think on that one? And maybe not as old. 55 plane would be nice to come out as well. Let's see what we get. Three, two, one. All right, 1940. So very similar. Uh, I think this one's even more common though than the 39. Don't quote me on that, but uh, I think they're pretty similar. Uh, 1940 just doesn't have the same appeal to it as that 1939 does. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it for those two. I do have this last one right here, though. This is the metal detecting find uh, ender, and uh, I am excited to see what we have in this one. Maybe this will actually bring us some luck on the inside of the roll as well. So let's open it up and uh, just grab that one off the top there. Leave your guesses down below or uh, just have them in your head for what you think the year on that one is going to be. Super crazy looking coin right there. It's uh, always fun to find nickels when you're metal detecting. They are a little bit harder to find than the other coins just because they sound a lot different uh, to the metal detector based on their metal composition. All right, guys, what do you think the year is going to be on that one? We'll find out here in three, two. <laughs> Look at that. 1964. Somebody hated this coin so much they didn't even bother to clean it up and they threw it back into circulation. It's got a huge chip on it somehow. I've never seen a coin do anything like that, but uh, interesting to pull out. I think I will put that one to the side because I just think it's funny. But uh, with that being said, guys, let's just uh, real briefly look through the rest of this roll right here and see if we can finally get something 
out of the middle of one of these rolls. And boom, right there, we finally got something. It's not the best, but uh, it is something. A pretty nice looking 1959, which is just barely uh, makes it into the range of what I like to keep. And we have a Denver Mint Mark on the back. Anyways, guys, that is nine enders on the box. I am already almost 20% of the way through the box, and I have a whole lot more coins to go. So let's go ahead and get into the next one and see what we can find. So guys, you've been seeing me use this placemat throughout the video today. In case you're unaware, this is a coin roll hunting placemat, which I designed specifically for hunting nickels. As you can see across the front of it, you have all the different types of coins that you could find in your nickel rolls. And then flipping over to the back side, we have a score sheet, which I'm going to be using to rate today's box, as well as lists for key date, low mintage, and low mintage buffalo nickels. These are really helpful for figuring out what's rare and what isn't and uh, you can pick these up on my website at quinscoins.com links will be down in the description below in case you're interested in getting one of those for yourself thanks for checking it out now let's get on with the hunt all right guys so we're about five rolls later now a few rolls ago i was able to find my first canadian on the box this is a pretty common date though 1998 and it is already in uh, my collection last roll i was able to get this one right here which i haven't flipped over yet i wanted to do it with you guys pretty similar to the beginning of the video we have a 1958 here and we are going to be looking for the philadelphia mint mark aka no mint mark uh, on the back there if uh, we want to get a low mintage coin on this so let's go ahead and flip this one over and see if we get it in three two one ah once again the denver mint mark so this is not going to be a low mintage coin still going to keep it though so we'll put it to the side and uh, the reason i turn on the camera here is because i actually found this coin which uh, I didn't think was going to be anything. I did see the Denver Mint Mark. I thought it was going to be a 64, though. Uh, but once I flipped it over to the obverse, it actually is a 1957 in phenomenal shape for its age. Still has quite a bit of luster left on it, so definitely happy to have that one come out of the roll for us. Other than that, though, I don't see anything else on this roll, and it has actually been an incredibly uh, slow box, especially for that start that we had, which was really, really great with those, uh, I guess it was maybe six enders in total because those... Uh, the, those reverse Denver enders didn't end up working out for us too well. But uh, anyways, guys, I'm still hopeful on this box. Uh, I'm wanting to say that I can get a buffalo out of this, but I'm not really feeling it today. That's actually just code talk. I'm trying to non-jinx it because every time I say I get a buffalo, I don't get one. So anyways, guys, hopefully we can get something like that. Uh, but with that being said, we'll just get into the next roll. So once again, I'm about five rolls later, and I think we may have something good right here. If we take a look, this was about the second coin in. And uh, it's looking pretty old. It was looking like those enders that we found earlier. No mint mark, though, so it's hard to say for sure. Let's go ahead and see what we get here, guys. Three, two, one. All right, 46. That's uh, definitely something to add to the collection. It's still pretty common, especially in the uh, Philadelphia range. But I think we might have another one just a couple coins away from it. Something very similar uh, was peeking out. So hopefully we can get something else on this one. Three, two, one and one. Ooh, all right, 1949. That's definitely better than the 46. Uh, would like to see a San Francisco on that. Uh, I think we still need the 49S in the collection. It's one of those key date coins uh, that's very difficult to find. So 49, though, that's definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, I did find a couple coins earlier, which I didn't want to show on camera immediately. This is a 56 Denver, so pretty cool to see that one come out. And then a little bit older here, 1954. And then I think, yep, this one's also a Denver so uh, we're definitely making some progress here I haven't seen that Buffalo yet I mean haven't seen uh, what no I didn't say that anyways uh, I'm just gonna see if we have anything else in the roll here looking for I don't know maybe a V nickel if we could see a V nickel come out that'd be pretty cool today I feel like I'm unjinxing it and then jinxing it again what do you guys think let me know down in the comments below it's been a it's been quite a while since I've found a Buffalo in a box so I'm hoping today's the day but uh, anyways, guys, with that being said, let's go ahead and get on to the next roll. Okay, so we have something pretty interesting here. As you can see, we have another colored coin right there. That one definitely looks like it could be a war nickel consistency. Definitely that darker gray that we're looking for, kind of dull. Uh, but uh, this one is not actually going to end up being a war nickel. I took a peek at this one, and uh, this is actually going to be maybe even something better. So let's pull that out and uh, see what we have there. And I don't know the mint mark. I do know the, know the date, though. All right, so this is going to be the date side right here. And as you can see, we have a 1952. I believe what we're looking for on this one is the San Francisco. Second best would be Denver, and uh, the worst would be the Philadelphia. But uh, we'll go ahead and see what we get here, guys. Three, two, one. And it looks like it's going to be a Philadelphia. Man, that looks like a war nickel, especially on that side. Ooh, look at that. That's definitely looking older. 
It's going to be a Denver mint mark, and uh, we'll flip it over to the front side and see what we have for the date. Oh, okay, 1940 Denver. That's that's definitely not bad. Uh, 39 Denver would have been a little bit nicer. We do need that one in the collection still. It's a it's a key date coin. But uh, 40 Denver, especially in this good shape, I will definitely take it. So we're a couple rolls later now, and I have something here that came out at the end of the roll, and I want to take a chance on it, just because if it, if I get this on camera, and if it is what I really want it to be, then uh, that would be pretty sweet. This one does look pretty old. I'm hoping 40s, maybe, maybe even 30s. And the reason I say that is because up here in the collection, you can see... Uh, we are still missing the 1938 and 1939 Denver. Those are pretty difficult to find. So uh, I'm just really hoping that we can get it here today, guys. Uh, you see the Denver. You see this is an older-looking coin. We definitely have a chance. So let's go ahead and see if we got it, guys. Three, two, one. 1960, really? Well, at least it wasn't a 64. I think that would have about uh, broke my heart. But anyways, we have about, I think, almost 20 more rolls to go. So we're a little bit more than halfway through the box. Still plenty of coins to go through. Let's see what we can get. We are about four rolls later now, and I definitely have some stuff to show you. A couple of rolls ago, I was able to pull out this really nice 1956. Haven't flipped it over yet to see what's on the reverse. And it looks like it's a Denver in really nice shape. I do like the look of that coin for sure. Uh, we also got one of these, once again, another uh, Denver Reverse. So maybe we'll have better look, uh, luck on this one, but I'm not really too hopeful. This one doesn't look super old. Hopefully we can get that 38 or 39, though. Let's see what we get. Three, two, one. Oh, all right. It's older. It's not uh, 60s, at least. It's a 1954. So we'll put that one to the side. And then, actually, we just opened this roll, and the second coin in, as you can see right here, is a 1951 and uh, as you may or may not know, the 51S is the one we're looking out for. So hopefully we can get the San Francisco on this. I don't need any of these in the book, though. It just would be nice to have it. So let's see what we can get here, guys. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. All right. Denver is a little bit uh, better. It's not as, uh, not as common as the Philadelphia, I believe, but also not as rare as the San Francisco. So uh, I don't think there's anything else in this roll, though. Uh, I'll let you know if I see anything. But with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get out of the next. So before I move on to the next one, I was just thinking 51 Denver. There's something special about 51 Denver. And sure enough, I flipped over to the backside of the placemat. And as you can see here, it actually makes it into that low minted range below 25 million minted. So that's actually the rarest coin that we found on the box so far today. You can see it right there, 1951D. And that is indeed what we have. There's the Denver. And there is the 51. And then as you can see up here, the 51S actually is in that key date range. Like I was saying, the 51 plane doesn't make it onto the list at all. But it is really nice to have a low mintage coin out of the box so far. And uh, I'll be looking for more. It looks like we have about 10 or 12 more rolls to go. Uh, lots of coins though, so hopefully we can get something out of it. All right, so we are now down to just five rolls left in the box. The five that you see here are all that is left. And uh, I found a few things here and there. I did just pull this 1948 out. And I wanted to take a look at the mint mark with you guys uh, together. So we're hoping for an S here, I believe. Uh, I think I have all of these, though. Yep, 48, 48D, and 48S are in the collection. But uh, what the heck? Let's see what we have here, guys. Three, two, one. All right, Denver, still not too bad. Uh, I was looking at the key date and low mintage ranges over here. And as you can see, the 48S is a low mintage coin, but I don't see the 48 Denver anywhere on that list. So... Uh, that is unfortunate that we didn't get the, the S, but still pretty cool to find a Denver. I've been actually getting a lot of Denvers out of this box, a really weirdly high amount of Denvers. Uh, case in point, take a look at this coin right here. It's a 54, and it's a Denver. I've found quite a few 54 Denvers, I think three of them so far. And then we also got this uh, 1941 somewhere in the middle. Uh, it's kind of a weird little thing on the rim right there, kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, so we got those so far. I don't really think there's anything else in this roll. I didn't see anything that was uh, standing out to me. So with that being said, guys, we'll get into the last five rolls here and see what we're able to get. Hopefully that buffalo stinks out for us. Okay, so the first roll out of these last five that I'm going through is definitely off to a good start. As you can see right here, we just pulled a 2009 Denver. Once again, a Denver mint mark. Uh, coming out of this box. Did this box come from Denver? What the heck's going on here? Either way though, I am happy to have a 2009. These are low mintage coins, especially relative to uh, all of the other coins around them. Uh, they cut production early in 2009, hence the low production year. So that is really cool to see. Uh, hopefully these last four rolls have similar luck in them. 
I don't really see anything else in this roll though, so uh, I'll just check again for more 2009s. It'd be nice to see two come out of a roll and uh, we'll get into the next one. Holy heck guys, these last five rolls are really doing it for us. Take a look at this. I just opened this up and it was like the third coin that came out. Do you see anything different about that right there? That is going to be a proof coin. You can see it's got a ton of shine on it, that mirror-like finish, that small San Francisco mint mark down there, which typically you don't find 1994 San Francisco because they didn't make those for circulation. This was in a proof set. Very, very cool to see a proof coin come out, especially at the end of the box. Go ahead and flip over to the reverse side so you can see that as well. Still quite a bit of that mirror-like finish there. I don't really see a whole lot of damage on this coin, so I think this was a, I think that this was recently removed from a set and put into circulation. Just awesome to find a proof coin, especially at the end of the box. Now let's see if we're gonna get anything else out of this roll. We are definitely two for two so far on these last five. First we get a 2009, now we have a proof. That's two things that uh, didn't come out anywhere else in the box. And I have to say, proof coins are even rarer to find than buffaloes, so I really can't be mad at that in the slightest. All right, I don't see anything else uh, coming out of the roll for us, though. So uh, I don't know, let's see if we can keep this streak going. I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and get into the third to last roll right here. Hopefully we can pull something else out that's crazy, just like we did uh, in that one. All right, let's see if we're gonna get anything right off the bat. <laughs> it's hard to miss a proof, I'll tell you what. But I'm not seeing any proofs in this one. I'm not really seeing much of anything on first glance, to be honest with you. Oh, wait a minute, we do have a older coin right there. It looks like we have another 1954. My bet is it's probably gonna be a Denver. They all have been so far. So let's flip it over to the back side and see if we have a Denver. And as you see, <laughs> another 1954 Denver. That's four 1954 Denvers on the box. Still pretty cool to find though. It uh, doesn't break the streak in my mind of great coins coming out here at the end. So we got, uh, let's see, we got the 2009 in the first roll. We got the proof in the second to last roll. And just checking for 2009s here real quick. Don't wanna miss any of those. And then we got the 1954 Denver in the third to last roll. What do these last two rolls have for us? Let's see if we can dump these coins without spilling any. Uh, it gets a little tricky there at the end of the box. But uh, let's take a look at this second to last roll, see if we're gonna get anything crazy out of this one. Man, this has been a great end to the box. It was a great start and a great end. The middle part was a little bit iffy. But anyways, guys, let's keep going. Let's see if we can find something else on the second to last roll to keep the streak up. <laughs> I really, really want to see that buffalo or that Indian head, um, which would be the other side of the buffalo nickel coin, come out for us. Especially in these last rolls, it would be great to see. And it looks like I think we just struck out on that one, unfortunately. I'll check for 2009s as usual to make sure I didn't miss any, because uh, that would definitely be a great find, especially at the end here. All right, I don't think I missed any, guys. I've looked at all of the obverses. So now here we are on to our last roll on the box. This one better be lucky. If you guys saw, uh, I think it was my last video that I did on pennies, that penny box I had, the last roll had absolutely by far the best coin in the box. So it does happen like that sometimes. I guess sometimes it also happens that the best coin that you find ends up being an ender, which I think is probably what happened today with our 1945 uh, Philadelphia coin. But either way, guys, we are into the last roll now, and we're checking it out to see if uh, we can get something good. Just as like a last ditch effort, uh, the f second to last roll didn't have anything in it. This last roll, I'm hoping will have something for us, but I think I'm already about halfway through it and haven't seen anything yet. Now that looks like it might be the most promising thing right there. This one definitely looks old. Uh, it is a Philadelphia Mint. I think the best thing we could probably get on this is a 55. So let's flip it over and see if we can get it, guys. Three, two, one. Oh man, pretty close. Those actually look very close to a 1955, but it is a 52. And uh, taking a look at our uh, low mintages over here, the 52S would make it into the low mintage. Uh, the 52 Denver and Philadelphia aren't anywhere on the list, though. I think that they are still pretty low mintages, though, even the 52 Philadelphia. So that's definitely a great find. So we are four for five 
on the last five rolls here. Unfortunately, looks like no Buffalo is going to be coming out of today's box, but that's all right. We still got a lot of really great stuff, including that 1945 Philadelphia Silver War Nickel right there, which is actually going to be going into the collection today. It's the one coin into the collection. It's getting really hard to put those coins in, but we were able to get it today, so I'm very happy about that. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and clean these up, and I will get you a wrap-up, and uh, we'll go ahead and tally up the points and see what we got on today's box. All right, everybody, welcome to the wrap-up of Coin Quest Nickels number 13. So starting up here with the Jefferson Nickels from the 1950s, we were able to get a total of 13 of those for a grand total of 26 points. Then over here to the Jefferson Nickels from the 1940s, we were able to get, it looks like, six of those and uh, quite a variety of dates on them as well uh, for another total of 24 more points. For the Jefferson Nichols from the 30s, we were able to get that single uh, ender which came out. That was the 1939 in the very beginning. That's going to be worth five points for us. And then we have a couple more down here, uh, some varieties here actually. So we have the low mintage Jefferson. The one that came out for us today was the 1951 Denver. You can see here on the low mintage list here, it makes it in right there. So that's going to be worth 10 points for us. And then at the end, we actually were able to get a proof coin that's also going to be worth 10 points, and it's a 1994S. Very cool. As well as a 2009, which is going to be worth another 5 points. Now, guys, the best thing that we found today was obviously not on this sheet because it made it into the collection, and it was that 1945 Philadelphia War Nickel. And as you can see here on the list, those are also going to be worth 10 points. So that brings our grand total up to a total of 90 points on the box, which is definitely a good box. Not as good as I thought it was going to be uh, based on those enders, but still a pretty good box. And it was really nice to get a coin into the collection very early on. Now, guys, as you can see, we're doing really great on this collection. We only have a few more coins to get into that first page. And then on the second page, we only have two coins to get in. Obviously, the 1950D, which is the key date of the series, and then uh, key date as well here, the 1949 San Francisco. A lot of these war nickels are difficult to find, especially given the fact that they are silver. A lot of them are actually on top of that also, either low mintage or key dates. So you can see a lot of the 42, 43 uh, ends up in that range. So they are pretty difficult to find, unfortunately, but I know that we'll find them. We just have to keep going through boxes and we'll eventually get what we're looking for. Hopefully in the next episode, this collection will get some love as well. I'd really love to put another Buffalo nickel into the collection, as you can see. It's looking pretty sparse over here. But anyways, guys, that's going to pretty much do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go down below and leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new because I post new videos like this every single week. Always bring you along with the hunts and having a good time. And as always, I'm Quinn, and this is Quinn's Coin signing out. And I will see you in the next one.